A new project is developing in the drone technology space to inspect offshore wind turbine blades while they are spinning. Uh, partners include RWE, DTU, Wind Energy, Quali Drone, which is a relatively new company, and the Energy Cluster Denmark Group. Uh, currently, the wind turbines are stopped when drone images are taken, just because it makes it easier. Uh, but supposedly, new drone and AI technology can uh, identify damage while the, the blades are rotating. So there's, a, there's an effort mostly led by RWE, to go take a look at this technology. And they hope to reduce the cost of inspections. Obviously, when you turn off the, a big 12, 15 megawatt turbine to do a drone inspection, you're losing a lot of production. Uh, so that they've, there's about $2.3 million in a budget to go look at this, uh, with about a million dollars coming from EU funding and to, until late 2025. So they have about two years to work this out. But guys, I'm just wondering, taking pictures of an object that's moving at roughly 200 miles an hour in very strong winds in the ocean is extremely difficult. This, this, this a very, is this a problem that can be solved quickly? I don't think so. And, I, and I'll take it, this is a, so one of my lives I lived was drones for a long time, fixed wing drones and rotorcraft drones and sensor sensor basically fusion with these drones so whether you were taking thermal cameras and adding rgb cameras and tying them all together but it was all about um the inspections and that's what it was Bef whether it was oil and gas or wind turbines or different kinds of assets so you run into some physics problems here right so you know that like the new iphone has a 48 megapixel camera on it however the difference between that and while they'll never be able to take as good of pictures as say like a dslr mm -hmm. you know like an actual big camera they simply don't allow enough light in. So to get a good picture, a good accurate picture, you need to have a lot of a lot of pixels per space and you need to be able to gather light quickly. So to take a it's so let's think about the thing uh, if you're going to take a try a try to taking a still image of a turbine blade coming by. So say that thing's coming by at 200 miles an hour. You need to be able to see and what we talk about hairline cracks, legitimately pull a piece of hair out of your head and you need to be able to see that, right? You're talking one pixel, one pixel per millimeter is about the maximum that anybody will allow in a in, in drone inspection campaign anymore. So when you get a big tender, it will say one, one millimeter per pixel is the largest will go. It used to be three millimeters per pixel. Uh, so the smallest, basically like, you know, kind of raster little square on the image was three millimeters. Now it's down to one millimeter and it's only going to keep getting smaller. There's, there's phase one out there has a hundred megapixel camera. That can take, I think they're down to 0.4 millimeters per pixel. So th th those images are getting better and better. But now we got to think about this. Something's going by you at 200 miles an hour. You need to be close enough to it that you can see that hairline crack with your the resolution of your camera. So if you have a 100 megapixel camera, you need to be probably within 20 meters of it to see that thing. Now you have to think about the, the movement of that blade coming by it. 90 meters per second, 200 miles an hour or so. And you, now you have to go take a picture so fast that you get zero motion blur within one millimeter. So you're saying that, that that lens has to capture the image and record the image. I can record it afterwards, but either it has to capture the image while that blade hasn't moved the thickness of one millimeter while it's going 200 miles an hour. So it's, there's just not simply physics that can capture that yet if you're trying to take a still image because you can't allow enough light into a camera sensor to do that. So you'll have to be moving with it at some level. And I don't know if it's moving the drone. You know, Remotion Cam has done the, the rotating camera where it's on the ground and the camera actually matches to the RPM of the, the wind turbine and takes pictures. So that's a thing. But now we have to also think about this. When you're taking drone imagery... Uh, for inspections, you need to cover four surfaces. So you need to cover pressure side of the blade, suction side of the blade, the trailing edge, and the leading edge. So how are you going to, you also have to make sure that you can get the leading edge and the trailing edge, which is be, you know, pictures from basically 90 degrees to the turbine to, to capture all these things. So there's, it, it, it's a novel idea. If someone can figure it out, you will get a lot of orders. You'll have an, a full, you'll, you'll be swamped with work because of exactly what Alan was saying, shutting down these turbines costs a lot of money. And as 
We're, it's not the the global fleet isn't Mitsubishi M one thousand A's anymore. Where it was only one megawatt when they shut them down. Three megawatt, four megawatt, five megawatt onshore is normal. Twelve and fifteen going up to eighteen and higher in the in the global marketplace. Offshore is going to become the new norm. So when you shut those down, you're costing thousands of dollars an hour. So for solving this problem would be fantastic. However, it is a hell of a, a feat that's going to do if they can if they can make it happen because you're fighting physics to make it happen. Joel, would they use a series of drones? Like you've seen at carnivals and festivals, these drones that are flying in a pattern. Like I saw one recently, I think it was on TikTok or Twitter or X or whatever they call it today. It looked like a, a skeleton that was moving through the air, and it's just this really core, uh, coordinated approach of flying drones. Could you fly multiple drones simultaneously to create like a grid to capture the blade as it spins across so that you could then assemble an AI processed image from taking multiple uh, photographs? Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. So how that works usually is all of those drones are programmed individually. It's a software in the background. And they use differential GPS for the positioning. So regular GPS, like the GPS you have on your, cell, on your cell phone, isn't accurate to five meters maximum. And that's horizontal. Vertically, it's 10 meters and 20 meters out. It's just positioning from one, one unit to the other. But now, if you use differential GPS technology, you can get that down into a 10 centimeter, 20 centimeter range. And so that's what they have to use, ground-based stations and differential GPS to get that to work. So you could do that. Absolutely. But now you're also doing this. You're putting multiple drones in the air within a minimum of 50 or a maximum of 50 meters away from a, a rotating turbine. So inside of these units, they have a lot of technology and things that will update at high rates of speed. Now you're actually seeing the controllers within drones operating at 50 hertz. So 50 times a second, they're giving it updates. Hey, you're moving left. Go back right. Hey, you're moving right. Go back left. That happens 50 times a second within a drone now on a normal basis. There's even more. There's processors that'll do 200 times a second. So if you're doing that, but a big strong, say you're in you're in 10 meters per second winds and a gust comes with 20 meters per second, in one second, that drone could get pushed 10 meters. That happens, right? So now you have this turbine spinning in front of it and you're sitting with these these uh, all these drones out in front of it. And now if you put multiple ones in the air, that's a, po a possible way of solving this issue. However, you still have to be able to capture images with no motion blur in them while the turbines are going, the blades are going by at 90 meters per second. You still have that physics problem. So you'd have a, like a lead drone. It's like when the geese fly south for the winter, you have to have a lead drone out front, to, a lead duck <laughs> drone out front to capture what the gusts are coming and all the turbulence, right? You'd almost have to do that. How else are you going to do that, fix that problem, right? Am I crazy, Rosemary? You need a lead duck in this situation? Yeah, why not? But you could, for your lead duck, why not get an actual duck and with a helmet with some instrumentation on it? Now you're talking. That's a cost reduction effort. I like it. Why reinvent the wheel when you already have, you know, an animal that knows how to, to fly and communicate and um, all that sort of thing? That's something that Bill Gates could fund right there. The lead duck. Right there. We ought to call it lead duck. Lead duck LLC. 